So <clears throat> now let's talk a little bit about the notation. The notation that we have used so far is that one, sigma ij. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a way to represent this. If I, instead of constructing the three planes to have passed here, plotting on that would be a mess. What I do is just, just sh uh, move, shift that, that plane, which would be this plane, a little bit to the right, that plane, which would be that plane, a little bit to the front, and that plane, which would be that plane, a little bit to the up, right? And this constructs this unit cube, okay? The size doesn't matter, in which I can plot the three components of the, all the components of sigma. Sigma, that is the three components of the traction vector on that. So sigma one one would be the normal compression, the x compression. This will be sigma one two, the y or x two component. Sigma one three, the x three. Sigma two two will be that. Sigma two three will be that. Sigma two y will be that. And this will be that. Okay. By the way, <coughs> you can see maybe it's a little fuzzy, fuzzy here. You see that here there are plot the stresses on the opposite plane when I take the normal negative name, okay? And look that, according to that, the tractions, the tractions on this other plane, since the normal, the outward normal of this is minus that one, we did the same thing here, but change of sign. So here would be sigma 3,3 three of modulus, but pointing out down. That would be sigma 3,1 pointing that one, and that would be sigma 3, 2, but pointing at 1. Because, of course, in virtue of this equation, when I change the n to minus n, the components have to change the sign. Okay? So that's why they are plotted in that way. But let's look for these plan planes that we call the visible planes, because are the planes that I see from the positive part of the, octa of the octave. Okay? Look, then, according to that, I can say, well, Sigma ij, what does sigma ij mean? So I wanted to know where of these vectors are sigma ij. I say, okay, look, i indicates the plane on which the traction vector acts. So one, i equal one, provides sigma one, one, one here, the three components of the, ve of the traction vector acting on, plane, on the plane which is orthogonal to u1. Here, <coughs> the first index of the three components are two. So means they mean that they are components of the traction vector on the plane which is normal to U2. And here, the three components start with three, which means that they are components of a traction vector acting on plane normal to U3. So we have defined what the, strength, the stress tensor is, a very fundamental, the most relevant concept for an engineer, I think, for civil engineer. Our designs rely pretty much on what is the stress distribution in our designs, structural designs, I mean, structural and fluid, many things like that. So very important concepts. It's so important that this is an engineering concept that has passed to science and not the uh, other way. Or, 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 the, or the way. So, in principle, even engineers have used their own notation, our own notation. Which is the following. Instead of using sigma 1, 1, sigma 1, 2, sigma 1, 3, we use that one that you will recognize. Sigma x, sigma y, sigma z. What are sigma x, sigma y, sigma z? Are the normal stresses at every plane. And tau xy, tau xz, tau yz, tau yx, tau zx, tau zy are the tangential stresses. Of course, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between these and that. And that one is the following. The normal stresses on the planes are called sigma. And the tangential stresses on the planes are called tau. The sigmas have only one subindex x, y, and z, indicating what is the plane where they are normal for two. Sigma x, normal to plane x, so following direction x. Sigma y, following direction y. Sigma z are normal stresses following directions x, y, and z. And tau ab, 
have two indices. The first index indicates the plane on which the stress is acting, x here, y here, z here. And the second one indicates the direction of this tangential stress. So both are good, both are important, and we will use as engineers both. When we do mathematical operations, sometimes use, using initial notation, it's easier for us, because this is appropriated to that, using that notation. But whenever we work, and, uh, work on physical interpretations, we use the, no the engineering notation, which is that one, which is the one that now you should fully recognize, sigma and tau. Okay? Recall, I recall, sigma x, y, and z stresses normal to the planes x, y, and z. If they are positive, they go in the direction x, y, and z, or x, y, and z. If they are negative, they go in the opposite direction. And taus are stresses, tangent to the planes, y here, z here, x here, indicated by the first superindex, and the second superindex indicates the directions on which these stresses act. If they are positive, follow the directions of the vectors of the basis. Okay? Of course, hidden values here in other plans, positive values indicate stresses which are hidden here, which are opposite in virtue of the second Cauchy's lemma, opposite to this one. So the normal stress here should be of intensity sigma x, but in this sense. The tau yx here could be xy here, would be positive, if it's positive, will follow the directions contrary on the xy. So the rules for signs, for senses, in the visible planes are the opposite from the hidden plane. So the stresses change the sense when we move from a visible plane from the same plane but seen from the other side, what we call hide, hidden planes. Okay? Okay, so let's e talk more about this. It's so important that we need to know. The, the, the concept of tension and compression. Well, we have one plane, we have a traction in a plane, then we can always decompose this traction into two vectors, traction vector into two vectors. This recall that this is the odd word normal to a plane. One vector which is normal to the plane in the direction of n, and one vector that we call tau n, which is a vector now, it's not just, that is the remaining, of course, that minus that is that vector, that vector, tangential to the plane, okay? Well, the, tension, the concept tension and compression is associated to this normal decomposition or this normal counterpart of the traction. If this vector is, has the sense of n, so can be expressed as a certain sigma times n, sigma being positive, what that means that sigma goes to the direction of n, we said that this is a tension vector, tension and compression. Please don't mix tension and with traction. Unfortunately, in other languages like Catalan and Spanish, and Spanish traction is tracción and tension is tracción. But in English, which is necessarily richer, it's different. Traction doesn't mean tension or compression. It means a traction vector, a vector which is putting some pushing or pulling, okay? But then, if it's pulling, if that person pulls because the normal component is positive, we say that this is tension, tensile stress. If this is negative, so it's pulling, it's compression, okay? So this traction can have a normal component which can be tensile or compressive, depending on if it's pulling or, pushy, or pushing the, 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 the plane. Okay? So that, this allows to define the criteria for the stresses. Say the normal stresses, sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, are positive if they, they are tensile. Okay? In the, it, they are tensile, and this holds for all planes, even for the hidden planes. For the hidden planes, if they are positive, if sigma x, sigma y, sigma z is, is zero, 
is, po is positive, then the normal stresses are tensile stresses, are tensile, not only in the visible planes, but also in the hidden planes. Okay? 